What's poppin'? It's your boy Mike Powers back again with that exclusive content. Uh, subscriber shout outs will be coming up in a different episode. I have not figured out uh, how to get that done yet, but I appreciate all the love and support. But let's get right down to business. Y'all know we only highlight and revere elite level lyricists on this platform. And the gentleman you now see on your screen is no exception. 38 special hails from the often overlooked city of Rochester, New York, where his name is synonymous with authenticity, honor, and respect from both the streets and the recording studio. It's not often you get to hear directly from a man who has so fundamentally changed the game in such a short period of time, but that's exactly what's about to happen today. We in the front fucking yard. How many years did we complain about the garbage that was being peddled by this industry? destroying what we built and brainwashing the youth. And now we have a slew of cats breathing new life into this thing we call hip hop. And Spesh is unquestionably very near the top of that class. Not my opinion, that's a fact. This man's resume includes at least three whole careers worth of classic albums. The Trust yeah. Takes One, Two, and Three, Stabbed and Shot, Son of G Rap, Army of Trust One and Two, the Thousand Words Collabo, Shay Norris, Juno, 38 Strategies of Raw, A Bullet for Every Heathen, Out on Bail, 38 Laws of Powder, and Five Shots, just to name a few. And he's collaborated with and gotten stamps from the likes of Pete Rock, DJ Premier, Alchemist, The Locks, Jazzy Faye, DJ Green Lantern, and anybody else whose ears ain't broke. And he has crafted soundscapes for Benny the Butcher, Flea Lord, Ito, Class Murder, Planet Asia, Graf, El Camino, Jadakiss AZ, and more. He's way past making street anthems. This dude is putting out epic docudramas. And any metric for excellence that excludes this man's body of work is not to be taken seriously by anybody who claims to love this sport. Very rarely does one man produce art that is on all levels beautiful, real, and raw as fuck. The man you click this video to hear from checks all those boxes. The man you do not want to go bar for bar with on his worst day and your best. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to say the illustrious, incomparable, highly decorated four-star general, a.k.a. Upstate King, Mr. 38 Special, is in the building. Pop is special. Man, first off, that's the hardest intro I ever heard in my motherfucking life, man. Hey, man, that's how we do over here. We, we show we give them well flowers. <laughs> hey, man, that shit was well worded and well put together, and I definitely appreciate that, bro. Brother, coming from a wordsmith like yourself, that's a that's high praise. So I certainly appreciate it. Your pen game is crazy right now, um, and you you outside right now? Uh, maybe at the crib, maybe somewhere else. Uh, getting nice today. I appreciate that. Let the vibe get straight for the interview. Um, you are on a run that can only be compared, in my opinion, to like the 90s Chicago Bulls. Um, all these <laughs> projects you dropping in, in 2020, 2019, do you feel like 2020 is your year? You know, I, I never even looked at it like that, man. You know, I just, I'm just working and shit. I think in retrospect, years from now, I'll be able to look back and tell which years I was most dominant at. But I, I, me, I'm so hungry, man, I don't even realize what I'm doing. I'm just working, you know? Like, they say I'm putting out a lot of music and shit, but, you know, that, that's the pace that I make it at, you know what I mean? And, you know, I'm just doing what I love to do, you know what I'm saying? Got you. Now, you from, you from Rochester. Um, to your knowledge, has anybody... Pardon? Yeah, 585. 585 is in the building, upstate. Uh, has anybody else ever popped uh, out of Rochester on the hip-hop uh, side previous to you? Nah, nobody popped. Nah, nah, never. There's never no opportunity, you know what I'm saying, for a, a, a platform for somebody to get attention up here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it was always talent up here and shit, you know what I mean? But it was never no opportunity. And with us being so far from New York, you know, it was hard for cats to get recognized and shit. So that always been a fight for, for cats in the city. It's just getting outside of the city and getting recognition. You know what I mean? 
Etho is from uh, Rochester as well, right? Born and raised. Right. That's and how, how long y'all been knowing each other? I knew Etho since I was probably 15, 16 years old. You know what I mean? Uh, we was the young cats of the city that was rapping and making beats. We started making beats together. And, uh, you know, we... We was young. We was the youngest cats in our city and shit. So we just always worked with each other and shit, man. That's like my brother. That's my boy. And on, on your Twitter, I was on your Twitter and you said you started rapping at seven. You started producing at 15. Uh, and you started selling crack at 11. That's my bio. That's a quote. Uh, I want to get into all of those, uh, if you don't mind. First, the, the rapping. Um, what was the thing that got you started spitting? And writing, what was like your, your uh, jumping off? My oldest, my oldest brother and shit. My oldest brother was a, was used to dibble and dabble in it and shit as a teen, and you know me looking up to him because my pops was a DJ. So my pops used to have like you know DJ equipment and shit. My older brother used to go up there and record and shit, and I used to watch him. And then you know I started playing with it, so I started playing with it very early, like around seven years old. I just started scribing, putting raps together and shit. You know, by the time I was in second grade, I was known for rapping. The kids that was in my class knew me as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So so I started off with a pen game early. You know what I mean? Early. Okay. And then what was the first, I'm going to say tape, because I'm thinking your first music you bought was probably a cassette. I could be wrong. What was the first tape you bought? Hip hop. DJ Clue showed me the money mixtape. It was a bootleg mixtape. It was probably about... 96 or some shit, 96, you know what I'm saying? Show me the money part two. I actually bought it. I was like nine years old or some shit like that, like eight or nine. I was a young nigga and they used to sell bootleg tapes and shit at the corner stores and shit. And I remember going in and grabbing that and that tape helped for me and shit. That tape right there helped for me as a spitter. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And uh, how, how did you get into the production side of it? I started producing at like 15. Um, I started producing because I was on house arrest and I couldn't leave the house for like a five month period. And in that point of time, I had a keyboard and uh, I used to be in a room just playing on the keyboard and shit, playing on the keyboard. And I had a homeboy who used to like produce it. He used to taught me a little method where he used to just tell, tell me like, you know, about the keys and shit, you know what I mean? How, to, I, how basically, you know, a beat is only these certain amount of keys that's being pressed and every other instrument is the same keys just pressed in a different order. That was like the basic format that he told me and I was like 15 so I started making beats around then and shit and uh, I, you know I, I, I was nice with it but I was always nicer at rapping and shit so I just you know focused on rap more and shit because like I said I've been rapping since seven so by the time I started making beats I was already had eight years in the rapping you know what I'm saying got you so I was considered a rapper first but I, being that I, by the time I was like by the, you know after ten years of knowing how to make beats you have to consider yourself a person that know how to make beats so that 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 that's what me made me start leaning on the producer side you know what I'm saying and uh. I used to just rhyme over other cats' beats and shit because I was around a lot of amazing producers growing up, you know what I mean? So I used to look at it like, man, ain't no need for me to produce. I could just rap on they shit, you know? Then when I came in the game, I came in the game buying beats from Pete Rock and Primo, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, those was the cats that, um, you know, I looked up to. So, you know, I was like, I was a little intimidated on just displaying my shit because I was around so much greatness. It took me years to get confident in my craft to actually start rapping on my shit. I say the first beat that I rapped on that was really mine where I knew it was time was Upstate the Queens, me and G rap. That was the first that I produced that. And when I played it for G, I didn't tell him like, you know, I just was like, let me just see his reaction. He went crazy. I'm like, yeah, I made that. And he started scribing to it. And it gave me the confidence to move forward. Because, you know, you know, when I, I put that album out, the Son of G Rap album, and it had produ all of my favorite producers on there, you know, from Pete Rock, Primo, Showbiz, Alchemist, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, my, I, my beat, and Derringer, shout out to Derringer, and the beat that I made, you know what I'm saying, it's still, it's still ground on that album, on that body of work, you know what I'm saying? So that gave me the confidence to, you know, keep going, so... After that, I just started producing, you know, a song here and a song there. 
but it wasn't until I made five shots. I was like, you know, what made me make five shots? I said, you know what? I'm about to just make a CD real quick where I'm rapping over each one of my beats and put it out there. So I did, after I did that, it showed me like, damn, I could produce a whole body of work. And after that, I start, you know, producing Shay shit and, you know, Flea Lord and Camino and, you know, everybody around and shit. But, you know, I had to test the waters on myself. Yeah. You know? That's crazy because you mentioned um, Upstate to Queens. I remember when I first heard that, I'd be on the couch uh, checking out the YouTube and certain cats got channels where they kind of just upload this underground stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, Spesh and G-Rap turned it on and the beat just... I love what you did with it because um, you, you you shine that light on G-Rap once again. And then y'all go bar for bar on that. It's hard. It's gritty. It's a nice uh, New York vibe to the whole video and the beat. I use that one to get me pumped up before I got to go cut somebody out. You know what I mean? It's just one of them one of them joints. You know what I mean? Um, Our energy in that shit. Crazy. Oh, my God. And But then the intro on that album, which I was going to get into later, but we might as well get into it right now. The oh. energy on that intro. You seem to be like a more of a laid back, uh, calmer type of spitter. That intro though was like you had a chip on your shoulder. What was going through your mind when you did that intro? It was, it, it was crazy because I was in, that was the first time that I was actually in the booth with G. We were standing next to each other. Wow. Like usually he'll go lay his verse. Like we recorded the whole album together, but we ain't go in the booth at the same time. Mm -hmm. We'd be in the studio at the same time, but he'd walk in the booth, I'd be in the control room, you know, then I'd go in the booth. But when we did the intro, we both walked in there at the same time. And we both standing in there in front of the microphone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, it's like I'm talking and shit, talking to him, and I got a certain aggression and certain, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, I, I just hype and I know, you know what I'm saying? And it just, it's, that's just how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And that shit was, that shit was beautiful, man. What's the what is what, what's that feeling like when you go into a recording studio? You got a beat playing, and on the other yeah. side of the glass is Cool G Rap about to spit over your beat. What is that feeling? Yeah, that's an amazing feeling right there, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's an amazing fucking feeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm more fucking old. Hello, man. You know, G was G like my favorite. G my favorite. Far as wordsmithing, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So definitely to see him over my production. Like I said, that gave me the confidence to do everything that I needed when I was You know what I'm saying? That gave me the confidence to do everything that I needed to do. You know what I mean? And so, because I, and some people may disagree with me, but I always thought that G-Rap was the forefather of um, of what Nas brought to the table. You know, that intelligent gangster flow from, from the East Coast. I feel like G-Rap uh, kind of birthed that. How do you feel about that? Of course, G birthed that, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that's why I called the project Son of G Rap. I feel like, you know, a lot of a lot of our flows and shit come from that, you know, multi-syllable word pattern and that, that, that talk, you know what I'm saying, come from G. Like, if you was in the streets and, and you liked it to rap, G had to be your favorite at some point in time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I came up on G Rap, you know, Road to the Riches, you know, DJ Polo, you know, mm. all that good stuff. You know what I mean? We always yes. looked up to G Rap. Real shit. Hey, what was the um moving on to 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 the grittier side of life? What was that pre precipitating factor that caused you to have to get in the streets and, and move that work at age eleven? Well, it was the environment. You gotta realize, like, you know, I was really affected by the crack epidemic. A lot of people talk about like I was a I was born into the crack epidemic, you know what I'm saying? So when you're affected by the crack epidemic, it's like, you know, the people in your household is all affected by it. You know, they was either using or they was either selling it, you know what I'm saying? So at an early age, selling crack was a way of survival for me, you know what I'm saying? So that and it was a normal thing due to the environment. It wasn't nothing that was that was out of the ordinary. You know what I'm saying? It was something that was just a, a, a alert, alert survival skill, like you know, and uh, so you know, that's just the environment that I was in. And uh, you know, anybody that knew me, you know, used to see me out there at an early age. You know what I'm saying? So a lot at of eleven, though, you the youngest. Yeah, at eleven. How do you? How do you? How does an eleven-year-old survive in that kind of environment? 
when your safety is constantly in danger, you know, haters is trying to come get you. You got to hold down your own in order to get your respect and your money. How do you process all of that at the age of 11? Like you was with the OGs I was out there with you or what, what was it? Nah, I, well, it just was like I said, it was the environment and shit. When you start off that early, it just become like, you know, regular shit. You know what I'm saying? It becomes regular shit. Like, you know, like I said, everybody around you is either doing drugs or, or selling drugs or some sort of way. It doesn't even seem like it's abnormal. You know what I mean? When you, and, and, and so like, you know, that just was some regular shit. I remember at 11, like, you know, buying an eight ball was like my way of survival and shit. I knew to buy an eight ball and bag up a certain amount of motherfucking bags. I, you know, I, as a kid, I always knew that I had to keep enough money to re-up with. That was a kid hustle, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? As a kid, so you know, it started to shape me as a as as a person, just to just to have money management skills and things of that nature growing up in those kind of environments and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and you learn the value of the dollar, of loyalty, and all of those things at real early age. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so I experienced that shit at early ages. You know what I'm saying? I caught a sale charge at like 14 years old, and shit mm -hmm. was my first time like actually being incarcerated and you know for 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 the for that activity and shit you know what i'm saying so you know we grew up fast and shit like I, you know like you know i'm lucky to be here you know what i mean where i come from you know what i'm saying like a lot of cats got like my peers and shit is definitely dead or, or or doing a whole bunch of time and shit so so you know like you know like I said, none of that shit becomes is abnormal due to the environment. You know what I mean? So, you know, this music shit is like, I get this shit my all. You know what I mean? And you hear the authenticity, you hear the, you hear the pain, and you hear the, you hear the stories because it was a lot of pain and shit to really get to this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, it just feel good to be able to display, you know, um, my strength and show how I overcame a lot of that shit through music. You know what I'm saying? Take me back to those uh, invasion radio days uh, with, with Green Lantern. How hungry were you at that time? Man, back then, right? It was like, I was always hungry as far as the pen game, but I wasn't really focused and shit. Like right now I can say I'm focused, you know. Back then I just was like, you know, do a verse here, hop on it, you know what I'm saying? But I was really in the streets heavy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I didn't really understand like what this shit really was and shit. So back then I just would, you know, leave from out the streets, go to the studio, and, you know, and just fall back. And I, it was never no consistency with me because I never knew how to monetize from off of making music. So it just was like a, a hobby and shit, you know, which I know a lot of rappers probably deal with to this day and shit. So it was hard to really take it serious back then. But my pen game was always crazy. You know what I mean? But you wouldn't hear from me that much because it took me a while to really understand how to monetize all of it. You understand? Word. Yeah. So the song Up Top, mm -hmm. that came out, uh, according to, to my information, seven years ago. Right. The video was ill as fuck. Um, it got the classic East Coast vibe to it. A lot, a lot of, I love those shots, um, those East Coast shots with everybody standing on the corner. I love that. How many of those dudes that was in that video you still rock with to this day? Man, I got to see the vid and shit, but nine times out of ten, mostly everybody that was in the videos and shit that was around me back then, is still around and shit, you know what I'm saying? But um, I shot so many videos, I can't really remember face yeah. by face who was all, who was all present and shit. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of a, a lot of cats might be surprised and they may not know. Um, you actually did uh, at least one joint with Gucci uh, back in the day. That that seems like a little bit of an odd couple kind of situation. How, how did that situation come about? Uh, as a trap artist from uh, ATL, uh, linking up with somebody from Rochester. I actually was in the studio working with Jazzy Faye on a record. Green was in there with me. And uh, 
Gucci was in the next room working with Mike Will, and uh, Green took the record into their room and played it for Gucci. And Gucci just ran in the booth and hopped on it. He was still in the record. He didn't even know me or nothing. Then I just walked in the room and seen Gucci laying his verse to it. Wow. Fact. <laughs> and did y'all get to know each other from that? Nah, I never really even got to kick it with him and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I just met him right then and there, and that was really it. Like I said back then, I never really took music serious, and I really wasn't into too much networking and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? My mind really wasn't there, so I would, you know, be around rappers and shit, and I just ain't really know how to really, I didn't know how to really, you know, mingle with with rappers and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know what I'm saying, like. You know, like now, I, now that this is my full business and shit, you know, I, you know, shit is different now and shit. But back then, you know, you know, I, a lot of cats that I came across met one time, or we probably, probably should have had stronger relationships. But my mind wasn't really there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, according to my information, and you correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, at some point, yeah. Yeah. Benny was signed yeah. to Trust. Is that correct? Say that again. Was uh, Benny the Butcher, was he signed to Trust at one point? Did you have Benny signed? Yeah, definitely. Back in, um, back in the days and shit, like, you know, we had all uh, just joined forces and shit. You know what I'm saying? Benny was always had already had his own movement out there in Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, at a point of time, it made sense for us to just join forces and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and Ben always had a recording history that go past 10 years and shit. And um, at a point of time and shit, you know, he had came home from prison and, uh, you know, I was I was starting to take music more serious and shit. And, uh, you know, we just decided to join forces, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and y'all is magic on, like, I mean, I, sometimes I catch on late. Um, you know, a lot of people that we know been down the road and then they miss stuff. And so um, I think the the one with in, intro is what it's called, where uh, Ito was sitting at the table Ito. making the beat. Yeah. Woo! The, 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 bar, the bars. The bars. That song is so hard. And I think that was the first time I really saw y'all together. And every time I see y'all after that, I think Two Weapons, some more custody. Listen, the, y'all magic together on it. What's the, what's that relationship like with Benny still to this day? That's my boy, man. You know what I'm saying? We still be working this shit, and we got some shit coming out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's my nigga, man. You know what I mean? Like, we motivate each other, man. You know what I'm saying? We always motivated each other and shit. You know what I'm saying? And when we get around each other, we make magic. We feed off each other energy. You know Crazy. And you said y'all got something coming out soon? Yeah, 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 man. We still like we got stabbed and shot two in the cup. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's definitely gonna come and we should be steady working. You know what I mean? Yeah, real talk. So uh class murder uh is a dude you seem to be very close to as well on um on the yeah. song Tell You Why. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that yeah. song showed um yeah. how far ahead of the game you yeah. were. I think it was like four right. years ago. Yeah. Uh, right. You got the, the soulful, ethereal uh, kind of beat. Mm, yeah. It, it, it got, it, yeah. it knocks yeah. though. Yeah. And class fun. singing on that hook is fire. When did you start to feel that you had like found your zone that you knew when you created something, people was going to automatically kind of respond to it? <laughs> and I don't know, man. That's some shit I always had. Like, I always felt like that, period, when I was making music. I just never had a platform and shit, man. I was always good with the air and shit. I always understood, like, yo, now nah, this gonna go, or the street's gonna feel this and shit. Difference is, it's just that now it's a platform for me to be able to let it go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, I always had that air and shit, you know what I'm saying? And then people was telling me, I think it was a few weeks ago, because I got uh, subscribers, I call them family, that was in my comment section or on my live or something like that talking to me about class murder. And I knew I had heard one or two class murder cuts. And I was like, okay, yeah, class murder can rap. I said, I, my, I haven't wrapped my mind all the way around dude yet. Dudes was like, man, you crazy. Like, class murder's that deal. I started listening to more class murder. This dude on hooks. It's crazy. Dude, the <laughs> voice. He's amazing. 
oh my god like <laughs> he on that Nate dog level when it come to those hooks and he make you feel it so um right. and you you've been knowing him for quite a long time right yeah since he was a kid man since he was like 15 16 or some shit man. that boy a man. monster and then lois lois ticket came out uh, i think about five years ago a room full of money might be back from that era too um, I, for me, I can clearly hear the evolution in the sound from, from then until now. The beat still had the feeling to it. The lyrics are still, you know, real life fire. You got the punches. Um, but it's a noticeable, in my opinion, noticeable refinement since then. Do, do you feel that refinement? Of course, of course man. I hear the shit. It's growth and shit. You know what I'm saying? I hear the shit every time I record. Yeah. And I keep growing and shit. I keep growing and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I just get more comfortable. It's a comfortability thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so you starting to feel more well rounded as a as a complete artist at this point? Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I got to shout out the the brother, the homie that 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 helped this whole thing come together. Who I was communicating with on IG. I want to pronounce his name right. Uh, Jordan Commander. Um, definitely. Dude, that dude can write his ass off. I got to say yeah, that. Jordan, my boy, man. Dude, I done read so much of this dude's stuff recently, and um, he understands hip-hop on a whole different level. Um, mm -hmm. So respect. I just want to shout out Jordan on this one. Um, you work with so many people. Um, I want to talk to you about some of them. Um, you seem to have a, 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 a special relationship um, with Fred the Godson. Rest in peace. What, what did uh, Fred... Uh, the guy son mean to you special man fred fred was my boy man fred was like the first person from like the new york city area to really embrace me mm. you know like genuinely you know what i'm saying back when i when, before anybody was fucking with me you know what yeah. i'm saying so yeah. like you know that meant a lot to me and shit you know what i'm saying so through that we gained the relationship and uh you know, that shit is sad, man. That's my boy, man. You know yeah, rest I mean? in peace. Real, real, real genuine, real genuine dude, man. You know? Is, is there a quality or a trait uh, from Fred that you kind of uh, carry with you to this day? Something that, that you do in your own life that kind of reminds you of the influence that uh, Fred might have had on you? Man, just, you know, just, just, just to work hard, man. You know, Fred was a person that just always, you know, wrote every day. I would say that Fred wrote every single day. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was definitely was inspiration. You know I know uh, Nokia was crazy. Um, but what's the energy like to have three elite spitters go to work on, on one track? Like, what is that like? That's my type of environment. <laughs> that's my type of environment man those are the environments i really get busy in and shit man i like feeding off energy and shit man you know what i'm saying i like being around motherfuckers that really know how to rap yeah you ain't got the choice but to, to go your best you know what i'm saying yeah the, so the the trust freestyle um Definitely. it's a video from back in the day is you in a room i think class is there benny is in that room it's a it's a room full of real niggas you look right. like you was having a good time on that on that what was your mind state at that time when you had all that talent in that room and 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 it's your show and they recorded everybody yelling out trust and you got these these bar spitters in there what was that feeling like at that moment that was, that was one of the best days of my life man i like that that like i said those are my type of environments and shit man. yeah i want to orchestrate some more shit like that man you know what I'm saying? Like those, those are the environments that I, I came up in where it's like, you know, a bunch of motherfuckers in a circle that know how to rap, that's just fit and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit, that's an amazing thing. And I, you know, it's crazy because you just, when everybody nice, you don't know what the person gonna say. You like, every, these ain't clips you heard before. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. everybody's jumping and you just like, oh shit, oh shit. But then you got a clip, you like, all right, I'm about to dump. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit just feels good. It's like showing up to a shootout with a long-ass clip. It's like, it's just, that shit feels great. You know what I mean? What's crazy is that in the video, because I done seen the video a million times, everybody on that bitch is serious as fuck. Like, like they spitting like they life depend on it. And you in the background just chilling. 
And then when you get on and start doing your thing, you really, you relax to having a good time. Like, I mean, like you enjoying the moment, but everybody else is mad serious in that joint. Word. Yeah. So, um, Shay Noir. People say she is one of the best female spitters out there. That's wrong. You're one of the best spitters. It's okay. a whole stadium full of niggas that don't want no smoke with Shay. Let's just say that. It's a whole stadium full of niggas don't want it with her. Um, how did the two of you connect? Shay reached out to me on Facebook, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, she reached out to me on Facebook. Look at this bike right here. Let me show y'all something. Oh, let me no, let's do this. Exclusive shit. I, you know, I ride them joints. Hold on. You know, I got about five, six bikes, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. This is one of my toys right here. Oh, you that's what's that? up. That's, that's exclusive shit right there. Good looking, special. It's All right. nice. Exclusive and shit, bro. Just drop. I hate to be to stupid. How many CCs is that joint? That's a thousand. Oh, man. Be careful, bro. Careful. Yeah, I'm real careful. <laughs> I sense a little bit of sarcasm in there. I feel like I feel like you're opening that joint up. <laughs> hey, so did you know that that Shay was special the first time you heard her spit? Oh uh, man, hell, fuck you, man. My first time hearing Shay spit, I didn't believe it. it I didn't believe what I was hearing. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, I could, first off, I couldn't stop smiling. You know what I'm saying? I had the biggest fucking smile on my face. Like, yeah. <laughs> is this really a girl rapping this good? I didn't breathe it. Like, you know how when people be like, like, well, shit, man, I get a lot of people that send me music and shit. And they be like, yo, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear that. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't have the time to really sit down with this, and sometimes you're doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people be cool. Sometimes people be pretty good. Yeah. At this point in time, I heard a female that was like elite level. Like, it was kind of amazing to me and shit. So I, after, I, I'm like, yo, come see me. Pull up. I, she had to pull up in person. I had to make sure that that shit was real. And she from Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, she from Buffalo. So ever since then, we was locked in. You know what I'm saying? So, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. And like I said, and like a lot of people like question if she write her own shit because she's so good. But she not only do write her own shit, she write her own shit and she smokes whoever the fuck get on the song with her. <laughs> Don't she? Don't she? Right. Oh, she's, see, I gotta, I gotta go back to, and I'm about, I got, I like to go in order because I don't want to mess this shit up. But I gotta go to, is it win, lose, a draw? Right. Yeah, y'all cats together on a track is like magic. Like I feel like y'all sharpen each other. Is that? I mean, do you feel like that? Like I said, it's the energy. Yeah. You know what I'm like we feed off each other energy and shit. But hell yeah, hell yeah. And do you do you see dudes that get intimidated by her in the studio? A fucking course. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen people change their verses and shit. Like, and all kinds of crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. How many people, because is, is she signed to, is it still uh, Trust Comes First or is it just Trust? It's TCF Music Group is the record label. Trust is just what we rep. You know what I'm saying? TCF stands for Trust Come First. TCF Music Group is the label. That's what, you know, we all sign to. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Have how many is people come trying to come out the woodwork and trying to sign somebody like Shay from up up under you? They you getting offers? Well, you know, she got other projects and shit that go on. Like she got a project with Mellow Music, you know, with Apollo coming out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, yeah, I heard the first cut on there. That was banging. Yeah, well, you heard that on with her and Black Thought. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And that's yeah. a moment for hip hop right there, you know, because you know what Thought do on the track. Right. I think a, a lot of people know. Um, you took a ride, sat down for a minute. We talked about that on the last Trapper documentary. You said you had been home twelve months. You'd already copped a couple houses, some whips, and some <laughs> jewels. Um. The, your homie that was in the video with you, he said that y'all was in the joint. Y'all have pounds of gas on your lap, is what the dude said. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he 
said pounds of gas, and and you and you made the point, which is is very well taken. You know, the guy that's got that kind of work in the joint, he run the joint. You said I ran every joint um, that I stepped into. Do do people know your? Did they know your reputation for music when you went in there, or from the streets, or both? And did the staff? No, you was 38 spec. Do they have any idea about your reputation, the staff? Well, in a couple of jails, I had like funny depths that would be like, do, make funny jokes and call me like Biggie Smalls and shit. Yeah. They knew I was a rapper and shit. Like, oh, here come Biggie Smalls and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they ain't really know who I was and shit because my shit really wasn't hitting like that. You know what I'm okay. saying? You know what I mean? But, oh, motherfuckers, that motherfuckers like, always knew me for rapping and shit, you know what I'm saying? But motherfuckers knew me for doing what I do in the streets and shit as well, you know what I'm saying? So did you, you run the store in there too? You had the store game popping off? Nah, I just was, I just was, I always had weed wherever I went. So if you got weed wherever you go, you gonna live, <laughs> basically. Real talk.